Good morning, folks. It's a crowning day for magnetic plasma. We look at weather and top science news, but we're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, taking a look at the last 24 hours on our star. Bright region still has no sunspots, and the solar flaring is flatlined. Filament activity is lessened compared to the last few days as well. Solar wind continued dropping out to quiet levels as we await the stream from the next coronal hole which is facing Earth today. This is the trailing portion of the coronal hole set, and thus far we have yet to sustain a sun-to-earth phi angle. Up in blue, you see it cut down through lower degree angles but returning right back. During that larger first cut down in the phi angle, we got the most noteworthy quake of the day. Large blood echo in Dominica, lots of blood echoes yesterday actually. We also saw an Indonesia volcano begin flowing lava from its peak sandwich there just south of the Philippines. Want to quickly congratulate Terence Allen and Marco Polo for correctly forecasting the large magnitude 6.6 in Mexico less than a week ago. Quakewatch.net both now confirmed with Marco Polo's defeating less than a 1% success probability by random. Up next, we're in Cali where the snow and hail arrived from Fresno to the bay and beyond, including the orange groves. Same story hit Japan as the major system is going to rake the entire country within 24 hours. Let's go to Alma. Dust and icy contrast is changing as the snow line is pushed back due to a random outburst of the host star. Not too shocking, it's pushing back the ice and snow line nearby. Up next, we're going to analysis of the major Indonesia quake and tsunami from last year. Turns out it was a rare superfast quake that ripped through the fault zone at more than 9,000 miles an hour. The final land motion saw a 16-foot displacement in the land. That is a major shift. In one of those stories where you take the mechanism and possibly rethink the timeline, they say glacial carving in Namibia, that's Africa, created tons of the features in the rock like this one. After yesterday's Sky Scholar video and others in the community, one hopes we're already questioning the unassailable status of the cosmic microwave background. Here are some other scientists who want better understanding of the deep cosmos as well. Dust and electromagnetism can play tricks on our eyes and our instruments. Let's go next to active galactic nuclei. Well, just one of them. Ours, actually. The Sagittarius A, central core of the Milky Way galaxy. Taurus and jet modeling? Yes, please, and thank you. That's a Van Allen Taurus and is how you know it's a Z-pinch in the center, whether alone or inside the plasma nucleus. And if you think that's magnetic, how about the director of the Princeton Plasma Physics Lab delivering a magnetic universe presentation? They pre-posted a link to the full talk, but they need a few more days to get the full video up. That is okay, though, because we're going magnetic plasma universe next anyway, in a piece that continues divorcing cosmology from the gravitationally dominated model. We find that it is magnetic fields that create the filaments, not gravity, and confirms that magnetic breaking is just one of the ways that magnetic fields stifle star formation in those molecular clouds. The interactions between the filaments of the cosmic web here might not be as pretty as that other illustrious animation with all the popping colors, which you saw before the paper, but this one, much, much closer to the reality of universal interaction and connectivity. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members, we did get that deeper look up for you, and the last two are actually both must-watch videos, so head over to your premium section. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.